Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first part of a two-part little mini-series talking about how to set up, configure and use auto land features in fixed wing models running RD plane. Now I've had lots of requests for this so thank you for everyone for their patience. It's taken us a while to get to the point where we are ready to do this because I'm doing this in collaboration with Ben up there at 3DXR. The T-Wing T2 is a big enough model to allow us to install a Bennywake Mini rangefinder in the belly and to set everything up. And we've just been waiting for a decent bit of weather. However, the reason we've split this into two pieces is this video was really focusing on how to set up RD Pilot and configure the rangefinder as well. The rangefinder that we're using is a really nice one. I've actually used it in lots of different places myself. And Ben uses it as a professional builder too. It's about 50 pounds. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. But you really need a rangefinder and an airspeed sensor for Ardu Pilot to do a really, really good job of doing the automated landing. So let me hand over to Ben and he can go through the process of how you set all that up. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at using a LiDAR to assist in a fixed wing auto landing. Um, you can use LiDARs um, to assist in landing on all the vehicle types. So in a copter, for example, it will help detect um, how close you are to the ground and it'll slow the descent speed in an autonomous landing. The exact same principle on the VTOL. So as you come into land autonomously, there's a faster descent speed and then it slows down so you don't hit the ground too hard. So in the copter and the VTOL sense, it's very good if you take off and land in different places where there's a different height so it um, reduces the chance of coming in too hard and um, it will also just give you a yeah more controlled landing on a fixed wing so auto landing is is possible and it's greatly improved with the use of a lidar and also an airspeed sensor so the process for an autonomous fixed wing landing is normally to um, for example drop a waypoint at about 30 meters altitude and then drop the landing one um, a distance in front of that, sort of relative to the glide slope. So it, it's probably 300 meters in front, but this will greatly depend on the aircraft you're using. So smaller aircrafts, um, you could start off much lower and a much shorter, bigger ones might require an even longer um, glide slope. So um, what we'll have a look at was we're gonna set the LiDAR up and get it functioning. And then we're gonna look at the parameters we adjust in order to do this, um, to use the LiDAR in auto landing. Um, I would say first you should have a well set up plane, so some good text tuning. You, you obviously need to know all of the airspeeds that it flies at and that it stalls at, um, and an idea of the glide slope. Um, a couple of things where we have a fresh cube here just flashed with plane 444, um, so it has had absolutely nothing done to it, so we will get loads of pre-arming messages on the screen and then the lidar we're using in this case this is the Benawake tf mini and it's the plus version so it's the sort of sealed ip rated version this one's on i2c it's also available on serial i just find it's a very um neat integration on i2c and it frees up serial ports for the use um a couple of little caveats as we do the setup stage don't hot connect the lidar um this LiDAR is very low power, so I'm very confident to use this without providing additional power. Some of the other LiDARs, um, maybe longer range ones, more power hungry ones, you should look at powering those separately. But for this little one here, I know the current draw is minimal, maybe 50 milliamps or so, um, that we're taking power directly from the I2C. And the other thing, we have the Cube Orange all freshly flashed. So let's take a little look at some of the initial parameters we're gonna set up. So let's jump straight into uh, the full parameters list. So configuration, full parameters list. We're talking about this LiDAR here, but the parameters are called range finders. So we need to, first of all, enable a range finder. So range finder one type, and this is a TF Mini Plus on I2C. If my memory serves me right, it's number 25. So let's type that in and see if it brings up the correct one. Uh, TF Mini Plus I2C, there we go, and that is, yeah, stays as 25. While we're here, we might as well enable rangefinder landing. So let's change that from a zero to a one. Um, in this latest version of Mission Planner what, that we're using today, we also have these new um, drop-down ones, so we can 
toggle the disable enable on here which basically changes from zero to one and we also have the default state um, showing as standard and um, so it's quite nice to see any changes you made so what we've done here is we've told it it's got a rangefinder we've told it what type it is we've also enabled rangefinder landing so changing a zero to a one let's write those parameters parameters have been successfully saved and um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to plug the rangefinder in so i want to have the cube unpowered so let's disconnect here unplug the usb and in this case we're just going to plug it in to the I spare i2c port on the cube orange so that's labeled i2c2 so it made that connection we're pointing it up obviously these these are a like an led laser um don't look at them uh, some of the lidar units are very high power so you definitely don't want to look directly at them Okay, so let's give it a moment to boot up. Uh, one thing we've talked about in other videos, when you have lots of peripherals connected to a cube, you've got multiple GPSs, additional sensors. I like to add a boot delay, and that allows you to make sure all the sort of peripherals are sort of fully booted up. So by default, we won't have uh, any form of boot delay. So I'll just show you, while, while we're doing this sort of setup for good practice, um, let's look at how we would add uh, boot delay to the board um, so I know it's a board parameter so BRD uh, underscore and then there's a delay bird boot delay and um, this adds a delay in milliseconds to boot to ensure peripherals initialize fully so it's milliseconds so three seconds here will be 3000 okay let's do that and um, now since we have enabled a rangefinder let's see if we're getting any readings so, oh, here we go. Sonar range is shown as. Um, I know also um, because of the renaming, so previously um, the, the word sonar range was used. Um, it was very common that early sort of distance sensors were all sonar. So let's have a look at if we can um, get readings if we change this naming to the range finder. So let's add another column here. So let's have four columns, three rows and then let's go in and let's adjust one of these and let's cut, see if we've got range finder one so all i did there I double clicked and let's have a look for um range finder one this should give us the same values there we go so um this is giving us an output in centimeters so these are basically duplicating the, the sensor reading um let's have a look how do we know it's working so pick it up and um, let's move it around there we go we're seeing all the readings um this particular sensor uh, it's a very good value sensor um the range i think outdoor it's approximately 10 12 meters inside in low light conditions that that's reduced i think they give a guideline of about six meters there's also a minimum distance that is recommended is around 10 centimeters so it is actually giving us reading there to nine but let's um let's set the rest of the parameters needed for getting this range finder to function and then also the plane specific landing parameters so back to configuration um full parameter list let's look for range so range finder one because range finders are an enabling parameters so what we're seeing now since we went and turned on range finder one we're told it had one we've actually got loads more parameters available after the reboot so in this case we've got um ground clearance so rng range finder one ground clearance this is the distance it's mounted above the ground um on your vehicle so um this can be as low as five centimeters um we also have this minimum centimeter the minimum readings now i know for this particular lidar it can read down to 10 centimeters so let's put 10 centimeters in the maximum so by default it's shown 700 centimeters or seven meters I'm happy to put this at 10 meters for outdoor use. So what this is, is it's going to um, output readings from 10 centimeters to 10 meters. We're going to just assume we are on the model we're going to test. I think we're going to be about five centimeters from the ground. That's at the lowest value we'll put in. It won't give readings below 10 anyway. Um, our orientation. So by default, it says 25, which is, should be straight down. And that's correct. And you can also tell it where the rangefinder is positioned relative to um the sort of center of gravity um in this purpose we don't need to do that other range finders you might need to put in a few more parameters 
such as an address if the default one's not there and if you're mounting them for other forms of obstacle avoidance this is where you have this um, direction but for landing straight down we've got minimum distance maximum distance and then height is mounted off the ground let's write those parameters now so that's the the rangefinder or lidar specific parameters the next ones are all around landing so like i say we need to have a sort of well set up plane first anyway and have a good idea at the sort of speeds it stalls at or um, what you can get away with for landing. So let's just have a look at, um, let's type in land. And um, we might also have to come back to um, some of the text. So the, the way an auto landing works is, let's just take, for example, the standard 30 meter height that you set before a landing um, waypoint. It's gonna do something called a pre-flare so let's have a look at land and then we've got pf so land prefair altitude so this is saying 10 meters so that looks okay for this one and it's same here it's um disabled if there's no air speeds so this is why we want an airspeed sensor as well let's imagine our um plane flies at 15 meters a second and it would stall at 10. So what we can do here, we can use this pre-flare airspeed to actually slow it down a little bit. So we could, for example, put 13 or 14 meters a second in here so we can bring the speed down a little bit. We've got a LiDAR here where 10 meters will just be detected. Um, let's say we could reduce this to a pre-flare at eight meters, for example. And then the most important one, the actual main flare, this is where it's gonna be very close to the ground. So land flare altitude. Now on here, it's three meters. Um, now that we have uh, the LiDAR in there, we could reduce this down to more like one meter um, or one and a half meter. One meter, I think, on a smaller aircraft. There is various other parameters you can adjust in order, for example, to force the nose down. So we've got this land pitch CD um, and there's various ways to make it go down in, just in case you have a sort of floaty aircraft that wants to carry on after it's flared. Um, so there is ways to force a negative pitch to make sure that once it's flared, it will come to the ground. But the, these reducing these prominence here, the main one, you're able to lower the flare very low now that you've got LiDAR. Um, if you don't use a LiDAR and you try and get these flare altitudes close to the ground, what happens is, and you're just using a barometer, you get drift over time. So your altitude, so sometimes if I fly a mapping mission for two hours, the barometer will be 10 meters out at the end of that flight. Um, if you don't have a range finder, it's gonna just drift and you're gonna, you know, the pressure changes. A real aircraft have to adjust this pressure. Um, you will see differences in the height, so you cannot accurately flare close to the ground. <laughs> um, you might flare in the ground um, or too high, but the purpose of this LiDAR is to um, get this flare right. A few things we'll touch on in this initial video is if you're going for a very precise landing, a steeper angle coming in is better. So it gives you a narrower, narrower area on the ground to sort of hit. If you're at a very gentle glide, this is where, you know, you're, you're 300 meters ahead of you can suddenly become 500. So if you have tuned your aircraft really well, you've got the additional bits of equipment on, this is where you could then potentially come in at quite a steep angle, flare correctly, uh, airspeed sensor to monitor and maintain a lower airspeed if possible, um, then you will be able to do a more precise automatic landing in the area you want to. But like I say this will greatly depend on many factors, flying speed, size of the aircraft. Um, you know, so hopefully with this one where our video, we're gonna use a Hewing T2, so about 1.23 meters, medium sized aircraft maybe. Um, let's see how well we can get this to land um, autonomously. So thanks again to Ben up at 3DXR for sparing his time to explain some of the tips and tricks that pros use to set this kind of stuff up. Hopefully now you know exactly what you're doing and how to configure and set up things like that rangefinder inside Mission Planner. Next time we'll do the video where we'll actually create a mission in Mission Planner, load it onto the He Wing, and then we'll take it out to the field, fly it, and actually get Ardu Pilot to do the landing as well. So join us in that next video. However, if you have a specific thing that you would like us to cover in that video, because we haven't shot that second one yet, just waiting for decent weather, then do pop it down below and we'll try and cover as many as we can in that second video. 
Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.